What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and this is episode five of building a $20 sneaker collection. No way, that's insane. I can't believe I actually got exclusive access on the sneakers app, that's crazy. In this series, I'm attempting to build an entire sneaker collection filled with retros and grails and collectible sneakers for just $20. And at the end of the series, I'm gonna pick up a pair of Nike mags. And if this is your first time watching the series, I know that sounds completely ridiculous and completely impossible, but it's actually very doable with some hard work and some ingenuity. So the way that we've been going about this so far is by going to Goodwills and Nike outlets and places like that, picking up sneakers that we can find that are in good condition or can sell for more and reselling them and adding that money back into the sneaker fund. And at this exact moment right now, the sneaker fund is currently sitting at $168.29. If you are new to the series though, I definitely recommend starting from the beginning and I've made sure to leave a link to that playlist at the top of the screen and in the description below because watching the whole series will give you some background on what we're doing today. And man, this week has been one of the best weeks we've ever had. I picked up so many pairs of sneakers, I tried some new things and they really seem to work out. Of course, huge shout out as always to the person who inspired this series, Retro Rick. If you guys want to check out his $10 game collection, I've made sure to leave a link to it in the description below. But with all of that being said, let's jump right into one of the craziest weeks and one of the craziest episodes we've ever had. Oh, and I guess before I forget, I should also address what happened to my tooth and also my, uh, my forehead. Um, <clears throat> I may have gotten into an altercation with the door and the door won. So there you go. <laughs> I wish I was joking. So the first stop of the week was a Plato's Closet. And this was the first time that I had been to a Plato's Closet in a long time. And I was incredibly impressed by the overall just amount of product available and the quality of the product available. It was all in really great condition and it all smelled great, which is not usually the case for some thrift stores. But the first pair of sneakers that I found was this pair of New Balance 990 V5s in like a rust pink color, which I really liked. Unfortunately, it was a little bit too small for me personally. Otherwise, I might have grabbed, but it was listed at 20 bucks, which I thought was a pretty decent price price, and I figured it'd be a pretty quick flip because 990 V5s are very popular. After that, I found a pair of Pharrell's, which I never <laughs> expected to find in like a thrift store or a Play-Doh's. I don't remember exactly what the name of the silhouette is, but it's one of those pairs that never really took off, so because of that, I decided to leave this pair for now. But seriously, the selection at this Play-Doh's was awesome. There were so many sneakers. Now, it would be a little bit harder if I was searching for a specific size, but because I didn't have any sizes in mind, I was fine with whatever. I did come across this pair of AF1 SF Mids. This is the the Desert Moss colorway, I believe, and it was priced at 50 bucks, which isn't terrible. The problem is these are selling on eBay right now for like around 80 to 87, so there wasn't a lot of margin there after fees, even though it's in great condition, it's a great looking pair of sneakers, and a couple years ago, these would've been going for like 100 to 300 bucks, so. So honestly, a really surprising find. I kept going through the men's section because there was just so many aisles of men's sneakers. I didn't even look at the clothes, but I'm sure there's some awesome clothes as well. I found this pair of Dame, I believe sixes or sevens, I don't know exactly which number it was, in decent condition, but it was a white pair, so it showed a lot of dirt, and it was also not a pair that's really reselling for anything, so I decided to leave that pair for now, but really just a great selection of shoes. I can't overstate it enough. It was kind of crazy. Then I found a pair of Under Armour, I believe Curry 2.5s. It wasn't a very popular model and it was a youth size, so not something that I really wanted to take the risk on, so I let that one go. Then I found a pair of sneakers which I was stoked on, which was this pair of Vapormax Flyknit 3s in really great condition. Unfortunately, they were a size 11 and a half, so not the best size in the world, but they were only priced at 30 bucks and that's an easy flip. I think I can sell them for like 60 to 70, so I decided to grab them, maybe throw them in the washing machine with some rejuvenator and be good to go. So I'm starting things off a little bit differently than usual and the reason being because I just posted my video from last week, today, um, today's Monday, and someone posted in the comments, you should check out Plato's Closet. They always have good stuff. Prices are a little bit higher, but you can always find good stuff. So I was like, shoot, I don't know if there's any Plato's Closets around me. So I Googled it and I found out there was one within a pretty close driving distance. So I was like, you know what? Let's just do this. And thank God I did because I found some come ups. So let me show you guys what I got. I got this pair of Vapor Maxes in a size, I believe, 11 and a half, but in pretty good condition for 30 bucks. A little bit higher than I would have liked to have paid, but this one should move quickly because Vapor Maxes do usually move pretty quick. As I said in the last video, Air Max type stuff sells very, very quickly. So this is one that I'm hoping to move quickly after I clean it up, maybe throw it through the washing machine with some rejuvenator. And then the other pair of shoes that I got, which blew me away, was this pair of 
New Balance 990 V5s in a women's size. I've never seen this colorway before, but it's actually a pretty nice colorway. The reason I grabbed it is because it was only 20 bucks, but what I didn't realize is that it's on clearance. And apparently what that means is that it's 60% off. So I grabbed this pair of shoes, originally listed at 20 bucks for $8. So in total, I paid 38 bucks and we are off to an incredible start. I'm not sure exactly what the sneaker fund is at right now, but I'm assuming it's around 40 bucks that I spent today. So I think I had 168. So I probably have around like 130. I'll make sure to let you guys know because my math I'm sure is off, but it uh, should be right up on the screen somewhere. I'm really happy with these finds. I am honestly happier than I've been for the last week. Last week was rough, but this week is already off to a great start. So definitely hitting up more Plato's closets and uh, they should be listed on eBay tonight. So I'm stoked. So I decided to hit up Old Faithful, even though I haven't bought anything from this Nike outlet before, but I do love Nike outlets, so I figured why not? So of course, I gotta check the hash wall. The first thing I found was this pair of Christmas-themed Air Force Ones that I don't believe really have any resale value, and they were retailing for basically retail price, not something I really felt like I needed. I wasn't really finding too much in my first look, but then I ran across this pair of Kobe ADs. I don't remember exactly what the model number was, but it had that pull lacing system, which I didn't like that much. Um, it was priced at a regular 200 bucks, so there wasn't really any margins there. Plus, this pair kinda looked worn, so I decided to let that one go. I'd actually been talking to Retro Rick and he gave me some tips about reselling sneakers because that's something that he does a little bit on the side. He said kid shoes are something that actually have great margins and they don't cost a lot to ship, so it's something that I'm gonna start looking into now. Huge shout out to Retro Rick for that tip. I didn't find anything unfortunately today, but nice tip to know for sure. Then I came across this pair of Air Jordan 4 golf shoes. Um, I'm not sure exactly what this colorway was, but it was full retail price, size eight. I don't think there's much resale value there. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comment section down below, but I wasn't seeing anything. And then the final pair that I came across was this pair of Kyrie's. Not priced too badly, but there was just no margins because they were selling for pretty much exactly what they were priced at on eBay. And of course the LeBrons that we always see. But on the way back from the outlet, I was like, you know what? Let's try a different Play-Doh's closet because yesterday's Play-Doh's was so dope. I have to check out another one. And oh my goodness, this one was bigger. This one was crazier. Now it was mostly women's sneakers, which was kind of disappointing because there's definitely better margins in men's sneakers, or at least maybe I just know men's sneakers better. I found this nice pair of New Balances, not too bad. I honestly wish I kind of knew stuff about like heels and stuff like that because that probably has great margins, but uh, it's just not something I'm really willing to invest the time into at the moment. And as you guys can see, I'm a total klutz. So I uh, dropped this pair of whatever the hell that was, but <laughs> it's just a really interesting experience at the Play-Dohs. Of course, you can't have an episode of building a $20 sneaker collection without finding a pair of fake Yeezys. Now, I don't know what kind of pair this was. I think it's probably from Zara's or something like that, but just total garbage, not even worth looking at. Then I found a pair of Nike React sneakers. I'm not sure exactly what model this is. I'm sure I've done a review on this model in the past. I just don't remember. Women's size, I don't remember exactly what the price was. I wanted to keep looking around before I really pulled the trigger on anything, so I decided to put this one back for now, and I don't think I even ended up picking it up because I found some better stuff, so. So there's a little bit of a teaser. Then I went through the men's section and of course we found a pair of Kyrie's because Kyrie's are some of the most popular shoes out there right now. Unfortunately, there isn't a lot of resale value because of that. And even though this pair was in good condition and selling for a good price, it was really only going for like 10 or $20 more on eBay. So it wasn't really worth the pickup, even though I thought it was a nice pair of sneakers. Then I found a pair of shoes, which I was really stoked on, which was this pair of Pegasus 36 Trails. Now I usually wouldn't pick up Pegasus because they don't really have a huge amount of resale value because there's so many pairs out there and they're usually pretty worn down. But this pair was in great condition. It's a pair of trails, which I've never seen before. And I was looking at comps online. And even though it was priced at like 20, 25 bucks, I could probably double my money, if not more. So I decided to grab this pair. Continuing on, we found a pair of Adidas Craze Explosive 2017. It's a pair that I had for a long time, really enjoyed. This could even be my pair, I have no idea. But I think I found a pair of these at the thrift store or the Goodwill a couple weeks back, selling for like 30, 40 bucks, and I just decided against it because that's really all I had. This time around, it was still selling for that, and there's just no resale value for this sneaker, so unfortunately decided to leave it, even though I think it's a great ball shoe. Then I stumbled across a pair of Epic React 2s in the Oreo colorway, one of my favorite colorways of Epic Reacts. And they were in really good condition, just a slightly larger size than I would have liked, an 11 or an 11 and a half, but I figured super, super clean, decently priced, and I figured the only part of the shoe that really needs to be cleaned is the midsole and outsole, so I'll just run the rejuvenator brush over those portions, and we should be good to go, so they should be listed very, very soon. So it's day two, I just hit up the Nike factory store, and that was kind of a bust, but there was some decent stuff, just nothing worth grabbing to flip, but then I hit up the second Plato's closet, and that place was 
really, really solid. In fact, it was significantly bigger than the first Play-Doh's closet that I went to, and I actually ended up picking up two different pairs of sneakers. I got a pair of Nike Epic Reacts, I believe in a size 11 and a half, which isn't like the best size in the world, but they were only 20 bucks, and comps online were saying that these sell for around 60 to 70, so that's really not bad, and they're in like really excellent condition. And then the other pair that I grabbed was this pair of um, Nike Pegasus 36 Trails. I think it was the same sort of prices that they were selling for on eBay, like 60 to 70, maybe 80. And uh, I bought them for 25 and they're size 10. So that's a really good size. And they're in like impeccable condition. It's nuts. I don't even know if I'm gonna have to throw these through the wash. I might just clean up the, uh, the outsoles with some rejuvenator and we might be good to go, honestly, which is kind of crazy. So after that's all said and done, we spent $45. Now I'm not sure exactly how much we have left in the sneaker fund. I'll make sure to update you guys on the screen, but uh, I spent a lot of money in the last couple days, 38 yesterday, 45 today, but I think all of it's worth it. And I think I needed to do this. I think Plato's Closet was like literally the secret key for me because <laughs> I feel like we have a lot of potential for profit and uh, it, it, something needed to happen. So I'm really stoked on this. I'm gonna clean these up and list them with the other sneakers. And then uh, we'll just keep on the lookout for any other crazy sneaker deals. So that night I listed all of the sneakers that I had picked up, all four pairs, and surprisingly the Nike Pegasus 36 Trail sold first. In fact, it sold within like the first couple hours. And what's crazy is that it sold for exactly what I listed it for. A lot of times I have to actually drop the price a little bit to adjust with the market or to try and entice people to buy it, but this one sold for exactly what I listed it for, which is 45 bucks. I realized after I bought the pair of sneakers, it wasn't gonna be able to sell for like 60 to 80, which was kind of unfortunate, but we still made a decent amount of money, especially because we paid only 25 bucks for it. So after all was said and done, after fees and shipping, we were able to add $38.97 back into the sneaker fund. So the next pair to sell also surprisingly quickly was the Nike VaporMax Flyknit 3s, even though they were a slightly larger size. So I bought this pair for $30 and I had them listed for I believe $77. And within eight or nine hours of the shoes being listed, I got an offer for $65, which is a little bit less than I would have liked. But at the same time, I feel like at least for this particular challenge, because this is a video series that's weak I needed to flip them relatively quickly, so I decided to take the offer, which I still think is pretty decent. And then the amount that we were able to add back into the sneaker fund after shipping fees and eBay fees was $56.63. Keep in mind, this was all within like a couple hours of leaving the Play-Doh's closet, so very, very quick turnaround. And then the final sneaker that sold out of the four that we had picked up were the New Balance 990 V5s. So like I said, I ended up only paying $8 for these, which is kind of incredible, especially because they were listed for like 20 bucks. Now, unfortunately, they were in in slightly worse condition than I had originally expected, so that kind of stank. Um, I had them listed at, I believe, 27 because I just didn't think they were gonna go for much more than that. Plus, it was a weird, rare colorway. It was authentic, but it was a rare colorway that I had a lot of trouble finding online, so it was not a shoe that I could like throw up on Goat or anything like that, so put them on eBay for 27 bucks, got an offer for 20 within the first 24 hours of the shoes being up, and I decided to take it. So at the end of the day, I paid $8 for them originally, sold them for $20, and then after fees and shipping, I ended up being able to add $18.34 back into the sneaker fund. Now one thing to keep in mind, because I've had a couple questions about this, is that I actually charge for shipping. So the amount that people are paying for shipping usually ends up being pretty close to the actual amount. I don't ever really have to take any money out of the sneaker fund to pay for shipping, but sometimes I make a couple extra cents or a couple bucks depending on how much they ended up paying and how much the shoes actually cost to ship. So that's why the total is so close to the sold for price, and even in some cases more than the sold for price, because eBay calculator didn't calculate correctly and I made a couple extra bucks. So of course, because I've had so much success over the first two days, I had to hit up Play-Dohs once again. The sneaker fund before we sold all these sneakers was $85.29 and after we sold all the sneakers, we had $199.23. We are a couple cents away from $200, which is such a crazy milestone, especially because last week or the week before we were at just like 100 bucks. So this is kind of nuts, especially just starting from $20 and now we can actually start really entering for pretty much everything on the sneakers app. I know I don't really have a shot of getting anything, but just the fact that we're able to enter and have another chance at grabbing a pair of sneakers that we can flip very quickly on StockX or Goat is just so great. So really excited about this and also of course really excited about hitting up Play-Doh's closet once again. They had actually a really nice looking pair of Air Force Ones in like this clay or dark tan colorway. I was actually really, really into these and I was considering these for myself. I maybe should have picked them up for the fun, but at this point I was like, you know what, I don't want to spend any money unless I find something incredible because I want to enter for some sneakers on the sneakers app or maybe go to New York with Tom and see if I can buy anything. So decided to let that pair go, which maybe I shouldn't have, I don't know. 
Found a pair of Puma RSXs, all white, in decent condition, priced not too badly, but just not something I felt could be that easy to flip, especially because while Puma RSXs are popular, they don't really resell because people buy them for retail or on sale, and there's really no reason to resell them because you can find them so cheap in stores. But for me, the find of the day and possibly the find of the week was this pair of Air Jordan 8 Retro Phoenix Suns. This pair was crazy, size 13, in crazy condition, and the Phoenix Suns are in the finals. Like, I can't even believe that I found a pair of sneakers that are for a team that's in the finals right now, so they should move very quickly, or I hope they move very quickly, and man, they're in great condition. It was just so nuts to find these, I couldn't believe it, and they were priced at just 25 bucks. Like, that's nuts. And then, in even crazier news, I found another pair of Air Jordan Retros at Play-Dohs. This time around, it was an Air Jordan 12 Winterized, unfortunately in a used size, and unfortunately priced at $50, which is exactly what they go for on eBay, so not worth picking up. I did find a pair of Air Max 90s. I had really good luck selling the last Air Max 90s, even though they were trash, so I considered this pair, but it's still a used size, so it's still a little bit harder to sell than I would have liked. But uh, not a bad looking pair of sneakers, just not for that price, so it is what it is. I don't know what it is, but today I just, I keep hitting. And uh, the pair that I'm most excited about is actually this one. This is the Air Jordan 8 Phoenix Suns, which is perfect because the Suns are actually in the finals right now. So this might actually sell very quickly. Size 13, I got it for 25 bucks. And it's in insanely good condition. Like this is a really great condition shoe. It's not the most popular Jordan in the world. I mean, it's still a Jordan 8, so it's still a retro Jordan. This is actually a shoe that I won a raffle for back when this first released in 2013. 2012 no 2013 is when it dropped like april 2013 okay but it's a shoe that i just never expected to find in well essentially a thrift store plato's closet sort of a thrift store they buy stuff from you and then they sell it for a higher markup versus a thrift store where you just donate stuff but um i'm blown away that i found these there was another pair of jordans there was a pair of air jordan 12s which we looked at unfortunately it was a pretty small size and they were trying to sell it for 50 bucks which is exactly what it's going for on ebay so that was definitely a no-go this was the only one I was really interested in. There were some other shoes that I liked for myself personally, but nothing I really wanted to grab. Things are really starting to pick up. I'm so stoked. Play-Dohs was honestly the move. Whoever left that comment, I'm gonna leave your comment at the top of the screen. Shout out to that guy. Um, seriously, good call, because this has changed the game completely. So the next thing that happened was one of the most insanely coincidental and honestly, probably insane things that's ever happened to me when it comes to the sneakers app, and that's that I got exclusive access. I know, I didn't think that was a real thing, but apparently I got it. And the pair that I got exclusive access for was the Air Jordan 1 Electro Oranges. So I was getting them a week early, and I was getting a pair of sneakers in a great size, a size 9. I couldn't believe it. Now this is not a pair of sneakers that I'm planning to keep, so this was so easy to pay for with the sneaker fund, because we actually did have like exactly the right amount left. I think it was $170 for this pair of sneakers, and I had $174 left in the sneaker fund. So the timing of this was unbelievable, and honestly, I'm gonna get a review out of these sneakers too. So these sneakers are doing double time work for me right now, which is so crazy So these just came in the mail today That's why this video was a little bit later than it usually is so I haven't actually had a chance to check these out yet But this is a pair of sneakers that um, I'm just not sure how to feel about till I actually see them in person I've seen pictures online. I was never really a huge fan of the colorway But I'm interested to see generally what it looks like. So let's pop the top in this guy. See what we've got Okay there it is, the Air Jordan 1 Electro Orange. A, uh, a pair of new Jordan 1s that come out, I believe, next weekend. Uh, they're not a bad looking pair of sneakers. I do like the front half of the shoe, the sort of black toe look at the sneaker, but as you move towards the back of the shoe, you've got this sort of weird metallic orange color. But it's not bad. The good news is, is that they are the correct size. They are the correct color. There doesn't seem to be any issues. Oh, there's kind of some dirt on the bottom of this one, but other than that. But yeah, this is the first big win on the sneakers app in a long time, and it's crazy that it's part of the sneaker collection fund. I didn't expect to, uh, to win anything on the sneakers app from the sneaker collection fund, but maybe that's good luck. So we'll just keep trying to enter and uh, hope that we get stuff because this is pretty cool. Not a bad looking pair of sneakers. Stay tuned for the full review coming in the very near future. So as far as selling these Air Jordan 1 Electro Oranges, I waited until after I unboxed them just to make sure that they were good before I sold them on StockX or GOAT. That's one thing that's really important to do is you wanna make sure the sneakers are the right sneakers, first of all, the right size, second of all, and that there isn't any weird factory errors. So I always wait to sell my sneakers on StockX or GOAT 
till I can actually get them in hand and check them out. I know people sell them like right when they get them, which in a lot of ways is stupid because sometimes you don't even get the sneakers, sometimes they're not even right, and then you screw up your StockX or GOAT account, so it's just not worth the risk. So I decided to price out both StockX and GOAT to see which one would give me a better price. The buy it now on StockX was $225, and after fees and shipping and all that sort of good stuff, I would end up getting $196.88, which is like a $27 profit, not terrible. But then I checked GOAT and the buy it now price was $240, which is significantly better. And after fees and everything, the amount that I would be able to add back into the sneaker collection fund was $212, bucks, or around that. And for me, that was a no-brainer. So as you probably could have guessed, I went with GOAT. I ended up paying $170 even for this pair of sneakers because Nike had free shipping. I sold them for $240 on GOAT, and after fees and shipping, I ended up with a total amount that I could add back into the sneaker collection fund of $212.20. So the sneaker collection fund dropped from the scary low amount of $4.23 all the way up to $216.43, putting us over the $200 mark for the first time ever. And of course, as you can see, I decided to go to Goodwill and try and spend some of the hard-earned money that I had just made. So my new strategy when it comes to this challenge is quantity over quality, which honestly seems to have been working for me recently. It's always good to have sneakers in stock so that I always have something to sell so that I never run out of funds. So that even if the sneaker fund gets down to like $4 like it just was, I'll always have product that even if it moves slowly, at least it can move and I can make some money back. A pair of sneakers which I was actually pretty surprised to find was this pair of LeBrons in pretty decent condition. I know I'm talking quantity over quality right now, but when you guys see what I pick up in a couple minutes, you're gonna be like, good call, I'm glad you didn't grab that because the heel of that sneaker was messed up and it would be very difficult to sell. So I guess there is some quality over quantity in some cases, like in this case. I did find a pair of Puma suede's, which is actually a pretty nice sneaker. They are very common though, and they're just like Vans, they sell for very cheap. So even though it was in great condition, not a sneaker that would really have any margins at all, so I decided to let it go, even though I think it's a great sneaker, and I have a pair that I rock on a pretty regular basis as well. The find of the day though was what seems to be a father and son sneaker collection. There was this pair of crazy Air Jordan 13 breads. Now unfortunately, they were beat, like really, really beat. The outsole of the sneaker was just destroyed, but they were priced at like $5.49, so I was like, you know what? I want to be able to say I grabbed a pair of crazy retro Jordans, so I'm going to pick up this pair of 13s, even though it's pretty beat. But I did find this pair of Hirachis, which I think was this guy's father's pair, and they were in great condition, priced incredibly well at, I believe, $5.49 or $6.49. I don't remember exactly what it was, but I'm just going to clean these up with some rejuvenator, and we should be good to go and able to make a profit of like probably 30 to 40 bucks. So a very easy, quick flip, but the craziest part is that it didn't end there. There was also a pair of Nike Kyrie fly traps, also in a pretty small size, probably his son's or kid's size, um, in excellent condition, priced again around $5 or $6. And I mean, honestly, wow. They were in really great condition, a lot of tread left on the sneaker, it looked like they had been worn maybe four or five times. And again, I was taking Retro Rick's advice and going with use sizes, even though I don't think they move that quickly, but they do have better margins. So I did pick these up, I picked up the breads, and I picked up the Hirachis. So overall, one of the best Goodwill finds I think we've ever had. It's kind of crazy. The phrase, it takes money to make money, never seemed truer to me than it does right now, because we've got a couple hundred bucks in the fund, and we are just finding find after find after find. It's nuts. And uh, I'm just really excited about all the sneakers that we have, because even though the Hirachis are a little bit dirtier, they should sell quickly, the fly traps are in great condition, and of course those bread 13s. I never thought I'd find a pair of bread 13s in a Goodwill, but we did. Granted, it was a kid's size and it is pretty beat, but I mean, shoot, I could probably list them for 20 bucks and they'd move relatively quickly. For this shoe, it's more about saying that I found bread 13s at the outlet than actually making any money off them, but <laughs> that's just really only for my own pride. It's kind of a selfish thing to do, but hey, you know what? Still a crazy find. So at the end of the day, we have five sneakers in stock that haven't sold yet, which is the largest inventory that we've had so far, at least that I know of. The first pair of sneakers that we picked up were the Nike Epic Reacts, which obviously, like all the other sneakers on this page right now, still have yet to sell. I paid $20 for them, and I think I can probably make 30 to 40 bucks off of them. It's a little bit less than I initially thought, but they're not really moving as quickly as I would have liked, but I still think there's some profit there, so I'm willing to hold out a little bit longer. After that, we have the Youth Air Jordan 13 breads. Paid $5.49 for them. I think I can maybe get 15 to 20 bucks for them. Not a lot of money, but it's honestly more about saying that I found a pair of Air Jordan 13 breads. Oh man, that's not a great way to go about this, but I had to, I had to grab them. I'm a Jordan head. After that, we've got the pair of Kyrie fly traps that we picked up for $6.49. I'm not exactly sure how much I can get for these yet. I haven't listed them yet. I'm assuming around 20 to 30 bucks, maybe, because they're in such good condition. We'll just have to wait and see. 
Of course, we found the Air Jordan 8 Phoenix Suns. We paid 25 bucks for these, which is such an insane price for this pair of sneakers. I think I have them listed on eBay for around 100 something right now, maybe 130. I think they can probably go for around that, so I'm just gonna leave them up at that price. It's a size 13, and it's also not the most popular colorway, but if this colorway was gonna be popular, now when the Phoenix Suns are on the brink of winning a title, I think this is the best time to have found this pair of sneakers, so hoping that they will move before next week's video. And then the final pair of sneakers that we have are the Nike Hirachi. We paid $5.49 for them, and uh, I think I can probably sell them for like 30 to 40 bucks, but we'll just have to wait and see. So the current total that we have in the sneaker fund, even with all these sneakers in our inventory, is $198.43. And what's kind of crazy is that I think we've got at least $100 to $300 worth of potential profit right here in the inventory, so we might have around 500 bucks sooner than later. Who knows, we'll just have to wait and see, but I'm really excited about the direction that this video series is going and I cannot wait for next week. But with that, we pretty much wrap up the entire episode for this week. Now, I would love to know your thoughts on this episode and which shoes you like the best. Oh, and also, if you have any suggestions for the series, obviously I listened to them. I mean, last week's suggestion made this entire episode possible, so please let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.